Thanks for listening to CarCast on Podcast One. Hey guys, welcome to CarCast brought to you by Dodge. Dodge was ranked number one for initial quality and best driver appeal for mass market brands by J.D. Power. It's the few, the, the first U.S. brand ever to be ranked number one in initial quality and appeal in the same year. Uh, let's see, coming up on this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about the TRX that I finally got the chance to drive. I'm going to be driving it for this week, which is pretty cool. We're going to touch on uh, the the new Ford Maverick uh, a little bit, but uh, we're going to welcome our friend Tavarish. Tavarish, he, uh, he has a huge YouTube channel. Uh, he's doing some pretty crazy builds, so we're going to talk to him as well. But before we get started, let me tell you about Meguiar's. You know, over the last few year, years, Meguiar's has launched the next generation of protective products specifically toward geared toward DIYers. They have their uh, their hybrid ceramic line of of waxes. They have their hybrid ceramic spray wax. It has their advanced SiO2 hybrid technology. It delivers ceramic wax protection and durability beyond traditional wax. They also have their hybrid ceramic liquid wax. This is the long-lasting ceramic protection, but in an easy-to-use liquid wax. They uh, they have the hybrid ceramic spray detailer. This is a real easy one. It's a quick way to remove dust, fingerprints, bird droppings, and give a little boosted shine and added protection in between uh, uh, full details. And then, of course... Their hybrid ceramic wash and wax. This is uh, this is the one you can find in the bright orange bottle. It's a unique two liquid system. You blend them together in one bucket. It cleans, protects all at the same time. So Meguiar's has a hybrid ceramic solution for everyone. It's ceramic made easy. It's Meguiar's. <laughs> CarCast. I'm Matt, the moderator, DeAndre, here with Bill Goldberg. Good morning. How are you? Good? Good morning, sir. Well, you know, uh, yeah, differing sounds around the Goldberg household. Today we have <laughs> some drilling going on at the garage site, so hey. That's uh, good. Uh, That's good news. As annoying as that sound is, it's it's also comforting knowing that there's some kind of progress. Things are things are happening. I know we've got uh, a lot going on as we're getting closer to uh, Barrett Jackson auction, which, as you guys know, is a big deal for us. We're launching a Bravago, our our beverage out there. So uh, it turns out uh, I thought I was going to fly. I can't fly. I've got to bring all this gear. We got to set up the booth. So now I got to drive, and and I don't mind driving there. Um, you know, on a Wednesday morning, it's driving back on a, at the end of the weekend. A Sunday, yeah. It just it, the four hour drive just turns into like seven or eight hour drive. Like just you're just sitting in traffic for f- hours and hours. But you know, but I'm excited about the event. It's going to be good. Um, I understand everything is going to be open. Uh, I was told there's not going to be a mask mandate at Barrett Jackson. Certainly, if you're more comfortable with it, then by all means wear it. But uh, uh, they feel good about it. They're still flying their drones over and sanitizing and doing all that stuff. But uh, the event looks good. The docket looks good. They got some cool cars out there. They've uh, uh, sounds like the motorcycles going up there. We got a little confusion on on uh, some of the serial numbers and VIN numbers, but I guess it's getting worked. It's getting worked out. Uh, you know, it's just. It's just a custom bike, and there's I don't know. It, there's a VIN number that we're under the seat that looks like a VIN number. There's a number on the frame that could possibly something else that we figured out was basically like a just an engine number or chassis number. And just we got to make sure that the paperwork reflects that, and that's all that's that's happening there. But everything else is going to be there, and uh, come have a drink with us. Uh, I mean, we're finalizing the. The times, but we think – so Bravago is going to have a public bar there. We're thinking 3 o'clock Friday for a bit and 4 o'clock – or th- 3 o'clock Saturday for a bit. Uh, come by, s- see Bill, see me. Come have a drink with us. Come say hi. Have a drink. Let us know what you guys think of the drink. See the motorcycle. We're trying to get that worked out. And if it doesn't, still come by and They'll say hi. We'll be there. We're going to be there anyways, but we'd love for you guys to come by at those times as we're trying to figure out. The best way to keep up the date on that would be to just follow us on social media. Follow me at Motorator. Follow Drink Bravago. 
please, on any of the social media accounts, and then we'll keep you up to date. If anything has to change, we'll let you know. We're kind of hoping it won't change because Barrett Jackson's about to promote this as well. (laughs) So hopefully things will go smoothly. Now, that all being said, uh, we've got uh, uh, our friend Tavares coming on the show in a little bit, so we want to be able to talk to him. But the big news, of course, this week has been the Ford Maverick. Uh, it's uh, bringing back the mini truck. Um, but uh, let's do this. Before I get into that, let me tell you guys about Empire <laughs> Records or Empire Records. I don't know why I keep coming up with Empire Records. Is it the movie? It's the movie, right? <laughs> it's the movie. Yeah. It's the movie. Nice free plug. Yeah, it's the movie. I should see that movie again. <laughs> maybe it'll help me remember empire covers uh nowadays cars are designed to keep you safe on the road but are you providing the same protection for your car off the road that's where empire covers comes in just covers no records they offer high quality affordable covers <laughs> engineered to protect against rain uv rays uh tree sap pollen pretty much anything that would damage your vehicle's paint and for premium protection try out their american armor covers they're proudly made in their kentucky factory and they have covers for rvs boats motorcycles and more all covers come with a free multi-year warranty and they have a deal for you right now you'll get a 15 percent off your entire order plus free shipping Shipping with promo code CARCAST. Go to empirecovers.com slash CARCAST. Use promo code CARCAST. That's empirecovers.com. Protect what you love. Now, I had asked you in the past if they had some type of uh, hail damage cover. Y- yeah, like something with some padding to it. Yeah. I've seen one out there, right? And it looks like it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. It looks like it's blown up around your vehicle, right? So it, I, I don't know how it works. I mean, it, it's, it, it seems as if it's, it's similar to the car capsule, you know, that I use. Oh, yeah. Okay. But it's much more ridiculous looking than I've ever seen. I mean, I, I don't even know how to describe it. it imagine, imagine putting a car cover on your vehicle and driving 20 miles an hour or 30 miles an hour down the road and right. having it completely fill up. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's what it looks like. I don't know how they accomplish it, but you know, I, it looks sort different. of uh, a lightning bolt getting through it. I, I think it will provide uh, safety for your car in a hailstorm for sure. Yeah. I, I, but I'm sure it it's works. Ridiculous. It's got to work somehow. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I'll send you a link to it. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. But it has to work. Well, it doesn't have to work, but yeah. it seems like it would it work. It seems like it would it would if you have a, you know a good a good fourteen, fifteen foot clearance above your vehicle anywhere you want to put Well, I guess they're assuming like if if the vehicle is outside, you don't have any carport or garage. That's why you need this. 100%. And if you don't need this, then put it in the garage or the carport. Like you either have it or you don't. Uh <laughs> It's ridiculous. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm going to see if we have time to talk about Ram TRX. I know we've touched on that quite a bit in the past, but I finally got one and I'm driving it. Uh, I got the press car and it is big. And what do you mean? You can't <laughs> tease like that and not go into it. What are your, what are your well, thoughts? Uh, all right. So we, we, we've got a few minutes, but and and we I think we'll be able to get into this more. Uh of course, it's fun. It's big and it's ridiculous and nobody needs it, but everybody wants it. And it's exactly what you would thought it would be. Now, uh, I could barely get in the thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was waiting to hear. And, and when I get in it, I have the seat up like as high as it could go because I want to be able to see out, you know, especially in the city. I want to see the, you know, the the Prius in front of me before I run it over. It doesn't take that long to get used to the size. Like you just, you know, you you kind of get acclimated with its general size after a few days, and you realize, yeah, it's a big vehicle. But I'll tell you that it it's it's quite comfortable. Um, certainly lofty. It's sim- to the Raptor as well, similar to the Raptor. You know, the suspension is soft. It's a little bit lofty, and you know, it, it it's got some dive. You know, some nose dive, a little bit of body roll, but obviously for it you know being set up with with its off-road suspension 
The engine is fantastic. And obviously, this is why Dodge and Ram, they've all been doing this for so long. They just keep shoving Hellcat engines and everything. It uh, it makes it great works. power. It's it's It works. It sounds good. I wouldn't mind a little more exhaust note with it, but certainly it sounds good. The supercharger wine is good. Uh, but the truck itself, and I haven't had a chance to drive any of the Ram vehicles in quite some time, but the truck itself is quite impressive. And I know that F-150 has sort of taken the reins as as the truck to beat for so long, and it is still great. But I am impressed with with the Ram interior. Uh, I think it's comfortable. I think the screen, the big touchscreen that they have um, – pretty integrated into the dash, although it's giant, it works well. (laughs) And and I do like the idea of having, when when you plug in your phone, um, it's a split screen. You don't have to keep flopping back and forth between, you you know, the vehicle's infotainment system and uh, the CarPlay interface. It does give you a split screen. So when, when your plug, when your phone's not plugged in, the entire screen is your radio or, or Sirius XM or whatever. And when you plug your phone in, it shrinks that down with all of its same features, which is which is cool. So you can actually toggle in between. You don't really have to toggle. You have one on top of the other. So that's one of the benefits of having the large screen, of course, and the large interior that allows you to do it. But the the leather, the suede materials, uh, I kind of like um, – the serialized plaque on the center console, I think that's kind of cool. Uh, it's interesting because, you know, it has, the you know, your VIN number and serial number. And then it it says, you know, it says, whatever, 11 PSI. It has the boost for it. I think it's kind of interesting. It's kind of an odd thing to put on there, but it is, uh, it is kind of fun. Uh it looks it looks good. This one has the light bar in it. It has the spare tire in the back, which, by the way, is like a thousand dollar option. The spare tire in the back. It, there's still under one underneath the bed, so you got two spare tires. But uh, I don't know. But the one that's in the bed of the truck, I don't know if your launch edition has that or if it's just an open bed. I didn't order that. I yeah. do need to order it. They're almost impossible to get, and I definitely need to order it because underneath doesn't store a 37-inch tire. 35 is the limit. Oh, I, oh I, I, I see. Yes, but having it in there does take up quite a bit of space in the bed. So if you're, if, if you're going to go out, like if you want to go out and just have some fun and rip up the dunes and stuff, things like that, then great. But if you're going to spend a couple days, you know, weekend camping or something, I don't know, it definitely takes up quite a bit of space, especially even if you go up to the larger 37. I Already the well, 35s. That extra, extra 15 gallon fuel tank I have in the back of my, yeah, it takes yeah. up most of the bed. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, uh, <laughs> the 35s, I could barely get it already. <laughs> the, the 37s, I don't know. And it has like a step on the side. It's not a retractable one. Um, I could see if you're, if this is a, a daily driver for the family and the kids and everything, maybe you want the retractable step. Uh, I'm sure the aftermarket can have that, but it, it's, I mean, yeah. it's not bad to get into. It's not like it's impossible to get into. I joke about it being, but just Having come right out of like you know like an Audi RS6 wagon <laughs> into this, it, it is much different. We just need a little trampoline. <laughs> I, I kind of do. It's funny. I opened the door. The dogs jumped in. They didn't make it to the seat. They made it to the floorboard. But the dogs jumped in. Uh, so it, it looks badass. It's wildly comfortable. Listen, if you want to make friends quickly, uh, I've learned. Take the Ram TRX to Harbor Freight because everyone in that store will come out and t- look at that truck and want to talk about it. And it was fun to show it off. That's the beauty of the press car. We found the Easter egg underneath the the engine cover. It's got the the T Rex eating the Raptor. They're which everywhere. Is, which is uh, which is fun. Um, here's the thing: is they say it's zero to sixty in three point seven seconds. Uh, yours being modified, you're hitting less than that three five, three four, somewhere in that range. And although I've driven some some quick sports cars and even super sedans that that hit that zero to sixty at a similar time, it doesn't feel as fast 
in the truck does it than it does in one of those cars. I just think those cars being lower to the ground, maybe I, I don't know, maybe just the sensation of speed lower to the ground where you can see the road go by feels faster. This does because this feels like you're you're trying to launch so much weight, uh, but then you realize you look at the speedometer and you're like it's it's wildly it's wildly fast actually similar to the Durango the SRT Hellcat that's a big vehicle it's three row you know it's not as tall as the TRX but certainly as tall hitting the launch control on that thing and launching at a similar zero to sixty maybe even a little quicker three three five three six. That fell fast, but not as fast as hitting, you know, the launch control in the McLaren. That'll do it in 3.5 seconds. It just it's feels like... It's a completely like- different setup, it- which gives you a completely different sensation. I would say that comparing them all, there is none more terrifying than the TRX. Right, because you don't know if it's going to stop. <laughs> well, you don't know if it's going to stop, and you don't. You also don't know if it's going to go straight, right? Yeah. Because you're pulling with all four corners, right? And so... Uh, I mean, I didn't do it in the sport mode initially, but the sport mode obviously makes a big difference. But once you just launch it in regular speed mode or whatever it is, it's it's, it's kind of interesting to keep straight. Yeah, because the suspension definitely is lofty. You definitely feel a lot going on and you feel up high. Uh, which is why it's always fun to see the you know the YouTube videos of something like the you know the Challenger Hellcat drag race the the Ram TRX because yeah. they're both almost equally as fast but just two completely different machines completely different um, feet. I, I'll tell you it it is loads of fun you know the Raptor's fun as well we've driven those certainly a Raptor R in the future is uh, the V8 version is going to be fun I I we've said this before. I like the competitive nature of these two companies. I like the little Easter eggs and, you know, calling it a T-Rex versus a Raptor. It's all in good fun because when you get into the vehicle, and I've been averaging mm, about 5.6 miles per gallon because I can't (laughs) get my foot out of it. Uh, uh, It it is fun to do. I would like an opportunity to be able to take it off-road and and experience it a little bit more. But I'd say certainly around town – it's it's fun and it's comfortable and I've been able to drive it without any issues. Again, I have the light bar on it with the lights above it. I don't really know how tall it is. They didn't tell me what it is, so I, you know, I'm a little hesitant to even try like a parking garage in Santa Monica or something like that out here. Uh, don't do it. Yeah, I I'm just not not gonna do it. I'm trying to just keep it outside the whole time. I can bring it in my warehouse. I got a huge you know whatever the 12 foot roll up door, but. It is, it is fun. It is, uh, uh, it's as much fun. If this makes sense, it's more fun than I thought, but as fun as I expected, you know, cause you, you start to think about, you've yet to take it off road. Yeah. You, you kind of have to take it off road. I think you have to take it off road, but as a, so my comparison is, is against the other ridiculous SUVs. How is it against a Durango Hell- Hellcat? How is it a- against a Lamborghini Urus or the, you know, the the RS8 uh, Audi? You know, as an SUV or as a truck around town, that's what I'm comparing it against. So it's just brute power and how it takes those bumps and stuff. Um, but it's 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 fantastic. It's fun. Uh, before we bring the on Shelby uh, version. The yeah. Shelby version would probably be comparable right now. You know, the, the, yeah. And the one that I'm driving, uh, I believe the base price was 69. That's pretty much across the board. It's outfitted with a few options. It's 90,000. I, I don't know where the launch edition ones came in, but, but 90,000 with the light bar and the spare tire in the back. And of course, the heated and cooled seats and all the options on the inside and the good sound system. You know, it's fully it's fully loaded. But I kind of feel like I don't know. It, it, you're going to be into over 70,000. If you're in that price range for this vehicle, you're kind of getting it pretty loaded anyway. The only thing I would I would agree with would be if you wanted to do your own lights, your own light bar, your own spare tire rack, you know, things like that, uh your own running boards or your own, you know, step, you know, there's some things but the interior, I would spend the money there, you know, get the nice interior, get the upgraded sound system, get, you know, all those features for it. Yeah. Uh, 
and it looks good. It's funny because it's such a big truck. It, you open the hood, it's got that big plastic cover on the engine. But when you pop that thing off, you realize the engine's pretty tiny in there, and it's a big engine, and it's it's kind of down low, and it looks like it's set back a little bit. Like it's it's pretty it's pretty interesting. But you can peek around it and see, you know, the top of the supercharger. Uh, all right. So before we get uh, Freddie on, we can touch on that more later as I spend more time with it. Maybe next week before we head out to Barrett Jackson, uh, I do want to to hit on this uh, Ford Maverick real quick. This was it's been teased for a while as as a small truck, and um, it came out and it's far more impressive than I think anybody thought. Uh, we were doing away with the with the small trucks for a long time. This thing is about ten inches smaller in length than the Ranger, but not bad. Like pretty capable. Again, you're, you're shopping for this. You're not necessarily going. Oh, I want an F one fifty, or I'm going to get a Maverick. You're not really doing that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is. I don't know. Um, it's actually smaller than I believe. Uh, uh, the Honda Ridge Line is, and that um, the. The Hyundai version, the truck that's coming out, I think it's it's about that. That would be the only competitor to it. Um, so this is what we got. The standard drivetrain is a 2.5-liter gas engine with hybrid, and it's front-wheel drive. Now, what's interesting is that'll get you 40 miles per gallon city. Uh, and it's like 37 combined in the hybrid mode, which is which is impressive. Um, there's an all-wheel drive version of it, and this will tow 2,000 pounds in the hybrid version, and it'll tow 4,000 pounds in the two-liter EcoBoost turbo gas engine version, the non-hybrid. Um, What's the gas mileage on the EcoBoost? Yeah, that's a good question. It's it's good. I I have a spec here somewhere. The comparable, uh, it, I mean, it's not quite the the forty miles per gallon. I, I'm actually, I'm not sure that they released the the miles per gallon on on that, and I think it's going to differ between front wheel drive and all wheel drive. Um, but to give you an idea, the the two thousand pound. The 2,000-pound uh, towing capacity is 1,500 pounds payload. You, you could throw an ATV in the back. Obviously, throw bikes in the back. You can tow a couple of jet skis or something for it. Um, you could tow a small boat, a pop-up camper with the hybrid version. And then if you want to be able to tow more, um, you can get the uh, the EcoBoost version, the 2-liter EcoBoost. It's 4,000 pounds. That's a 23-foot camper. That's a, a, a handful of, of, of things in the back if you want. Um, it's got the, you know, it's got the 12 volt, uh, 20 amp, uh, power system on it. Yeah. It's got the 110 outlets on it. Uh, the bed in the back, what they're calling flex bed. Very cool. They kind of designed it, you know, it's got the bed liner sort of composite bed, you know, in the inside, you can grab some two by fours and you could lay down, um, uh, you can divide the bed. You could you can lay down four by eight sheets of plywood by going. You, you, you the plywood would sit on top of the wheel wells. You use some two by fours to 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 kind of separate it, and then the tailgate has. Oh, you can lay flat, or it comes up a little bit, and when it comes up a little bit, you can lock it in place. And that's the height of the wheel wells. So a four by eight sheet of plywood sits along the wheel wells and the tail end of the tailgate, and you can actually haul stuff because that's a common size sheet of, of wood. You can go and you can grab that. Um, it's got uh, plenty of room on the inside for its size, all sorts of cubbies and, and tall water bottles. They put a lot of thought into that. That's been one of the big things that Ford's been doing recently is really been talking about. Uh, where do you put a tall water bottle? Where do you put the small ones? Where do you put all the storage stuff? But this is kind of a neat idea. In the back, they have this fit. What I think it's called fit, F I I T, or whatever they're calling it. It's it's like a tether system. It's basically slots, and in the slots you can put in different accessories. You can slide in a cup holder, and you know there's a slot to hold it. You can uh, a camera mounts. Um, uh, 
uh, uh, wire stores. You know, you can wrap your phone wire around it. But Ford then said they're going to release the specs for that slot. So not just the aftermarket, but anybody who wants to, you can 3D print your own pieces. You can have stuff made. You can say, hey, I want to mount something here or 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 – you know, certainly in the creative for people doing filming and things like that, where do you mount your GoPros or your towing stuff and, you know, maybe mount a, a phone mount that's up higher, you know, so a kid sitting in the back can, can do it. It's kind of neat that Ford's saying, hey, you can do whatever you want with this thing. We'll release the specs and then you can use those specs to, to 3D print whatever you want. I just thought that was kind of a neat idea because when we talked about Bronco – uh, they have that bar up along the dash, and they say, hey, well, you can add all sorts of accessories on that bar. You can slide it back and forth. The aftermarket can add whatever they want to it. They're like, instead of just giving you preset accessories, like here's a phone mount, here's a cup holder, they're saying, we give you this accessory mount, and you can do what you want with it. So those are the type of things that I kind of like that are that were uh, were kind of fun. So. Um, we're gonna we're gonna get Freddie on. He's waiting in the wings right now. We'll talk about his show, so we'll do that. But we'll touch more on on the Maverick later. Um, I'll probably hit it up on uh, on shift and steer and my buddies Brad and Aaron uh, later in the week as well. So, um, Chris, why don't you bring in Freddie and I'll tell you guys about uh, about Dodge. You know, Dodge has officially opened orders of the new twenty twenty one. Uh, Durango SRT Hellcat, as we talked about, it's the most powerful SUV ever, ever, zero to 60 in three and a half seconds. Oh, man, I drove it. It's a blast. It's fun. It's exclusive for 2021. They were only going to make 2,000 units, but if you got an order in, they want to fulfill all of those orders. You'll get 710 horsepower. It's got this new aggressive exterior styling, really kind of reflects the uh, the, the Charger wide body and that driver-centric cockpit with the new uh, version of the Uconnect, the uh, version 5, which also that's the same infotainment system that I love in the in the TRX. All buyers of the Durango Hellcat will receive a, will receive a full day of pro instruction at the Radford Racing School. Uh, we've been there. That's a fun place as well. And as you know, Dodge was ranked number one for initial quality and best driver appeal for mass market brands by J.D. Power. It's the first U.S. brand ever to be ranked number one in initial quality and appeal in the same year. So see your local Dodge dealer or visit Dodge.com today to schedule a test drive. Hey, Freddie, how's it going? How you doing, man? Oh, man, uh, we're doing great. We're getting ready to go to Bear Jackson. Are you going to Las Vegas? Are you going to Bear Jackson? It's a long it's a long haul for you. So I, I wish. So uh, my friend Tyler is actually one of the announcers there. And uh, he really, you know, he, he loves going there. He, he does like... Uh, all the sort of hoopties at the Barrett Jackson auction. <laughs> um, but I, I wish I could go, uh, especially because they're having the uh, one of the stunt cars from the Fast and Furious, like the Supra. Yeah, and I'm Supra. really excited to know what that goes for. Okay, so let's get into that a little bit. First of all, we, we met years and years ago, been friends for a long time, back when you were a journalist. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, journalist. Yeah, Jur- let's, journalist. Let's just... As much as we are journalists in the entertainment, sort of the automotive space. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, it started the YouTube show, uh, several YouTube shows. So Tavarish is the name you go by online. You have a YouTube yes. channel knocking on the door of 2 million subscribers right now. How long have you been doing the YouTube channel? So I've been doing it for about five years full time, uh, and I never thought that it would get to anything, really. I thought it would just be sort of just like a hobby. But now, you know, one car turns into another car, turns into another car. And now I have way too many projects and kind of pulling my hair out, trying to finish all of them. But, you know, it beats coal mining. (laughs) Yeah, right. Uh, Where's your home base? Florida? Yeah, so I'm in Central Florida, near Orlando. Uh, So right now it is a hundred and... 50,000 degrees outside, so yeah. that's, that's how it's well, it really hot. Bill gets out there often. It's the wrestling capital of the world, apparently. <laughs> I don't know if that's where the, <laughs> the training session is or whatever, but the, every time he's like, I got to go to Florida. got to go wrestle. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, open invite. You can come by and uh, drive any of my cars. I don't have any Mopar stuff, oddly enough, but uh, that can change. That can always change. Yeah, you never know. So <laughs> it, actually, it's actually it looks like a fantastic – I saw you've been building it out over the last few years for sure. Uh, you've got the actually you started in your garage at home with with a couple of lifts there, and you grew how much square feet you got over there? 
Uh, so I have 5,200 square feet, um, and I thought I would never be able to fill this up. And then now I'm like, hey, I need another building or three because I have way- I have cars stacked. I have five lifts back there, and I have another lift over there, and then it's just full of cars. So explain the YouTube channel, and th- th- that'll lead to why you got so many of these cars. But they're kind of wacky choices, uh, some very tastefully done and some a little ridiculous. And <laughs> y- you seem to be taking on uh, unnecessary projects <laughs> for the sake of of entertainment. Like you're putting yourself uh, – you're, you're challenging yourself to a point that it's it's – I don't know. It's entertaining to see for sure, but does it make sense to do? Uh, um, yeah. So it, it never makes sense to take on any projects, especially the ones I do, because you could probably buy a used car for the amount of money and time that I have in these things. So uh, the way I do my YouTube channel is I buy cars that are either sight unseen, neglected, uh, just in generally bad shape. Wrecked, and then burnt to the ground, like yeah, ridiculously yeah, I mean, bad shape. <laughs> Sometimes burnt to the ground, but sometimes just a little bit burnt. Like sometimes just a little bit, <laughs> no, just, just a, a right, right kind of burnt. <laughs> um, and then I, I try to make them my own. I modify them. Like I, you can't see behind. Actually, hold on. You can probably see behind me. That's uh, my Lamborghini Gallardo Spider, and that's a twin turbo car. It was fire damaged originally, uh, so that's kind of what started my channel. And then from there, that blossomed into all these other cars. So I have, you know, Lamborghinis, Aston Martins. Uh, I love the the old, like the older, more uh, affordable stuff too. So that's kind of where I cut my teeth. But you know, the the supercars and exotics, that's always fun. So tell me about uh, a couple of the projects. In particular, you have a McLaren that was wrecked, and yeah. the issue was McLaren said, uh, "Get rid of this car. It's unsafe. The carbon fiber tub is damaged. It's unfixable." Yeah, don't even so, try. <laughs> I, oh, oh, absolutely. So they said, I don't even a, mention our name. <laughs> yeah, please, please don't come into the dealership. We will not open the door for you. We will have security escort you out. Um, so I have a 2016 McLaren 675 LT, and they only made 500 of those in the world. I mean, technically a thousand. They made a th- uh, 500 coupes and 500 spiders. But it's a super rare car. I love the way it looks. I think it's the best looking McLaren next to the P1 and F1. And I never thought I could afford it. But, you know, one kind of came across uh, the auctions and I got it for like around 80 grand. But it was it was broken in every single way. So it was crashed in the front and back. It had carbon tub damage, like you like you mentioned. The engine had been pushed forward into the firewall. So the turbo was messed up. Um, and then it also had some electrical issues. Uh, it, I mean, it obviously wasn't running or anything like that, but I replaced everything. I got new frames front and back. I got the carbon tub uh, repaired by a guy that actually fixes bicycle frames. Uh, but it's not not like you know like a huffy that you get at Walmart. I'm talking about like <laughs> yeah. like Tour de France bikes and yeah, yeah. You know, carbon uh, fiber bikes. Yeah, America's Cup boats that that sort of thing. So um, you know he had that car over there, and it wasn't anything that was super structural. It was uh, just mostly cosmetic. So he made like a perfect mold and then uh, matched the weave and everything. So I mean I I lift the car up by that point all the time. There's there's no issues. It's super duper strong. Uh, I got the engine um, fixed. I mean, I, I fixed it myself with uh, my friend Jared and I got the turbos rebuilt. So when I got them rebuilt, I got them upgraded a little bit. So now instead of 600, you know, 66 horsepower, it'll probably make north of 800. And then um, I'm getting all the body panels painted in a uh, in a custom color that uh, that I made for the project. And all the body panels are at the body shop now. The car is basically just a rolling death cart, but it's very, very fast. Um, and, it, and everything runs and no check engine lights, knock on wood. Yeah, it's it's more work than I'd want to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, I'm, I'm curious, what does, um, what does it cost to repair the carbon fiber? So the carbon fiber repair actually isn't that bad, especially with, um, you know, labor rates over here. So I'm in central Florida uh, and this guy was extremely reasonable. And it was one of those things where he didn't know how to really gauge how much to charge me. Uh, So I think it ended up being like five grand, which is I mean, it's a lot of money, but it's also, you know, one of the main structural components of the car. So I wanted to make sure it was done right. Uh, So I gave him all the time he needed and he just knocked it out of the park. 
It's interesting to see some of the the videos you've done documenting that process because, like you said, it, it hasn't been done before. So there was a little bit of a learning curve process to it. So. Oh, of course. And like, there's another thing that hasn't been done before on that project. It's uh, so McLaren has this um, this kind of in-house tuning company, MSO, McLaren Special Operations. And they will modify your car for a, an exorbitant fee, uh, but they'll do it in a way where your car is different from others. So I really wanted a roof scoop on my car. That's one of the, the coolest things you can get on a McLaren. You have the like intake on top of you. You can hear all the intake noise and all that. Um, so I acquired a roof scoop from a car that never really never got it. Um, and this was the last one in the world. And McLaren would not sell many parts for it. It was a total like, oh, a friend of a friend of a friend got this part. And, you know, if I went to McLaren to install a roof scoop on a 675 that wasn't crashed, because, I mean, they obviously wouldn't touch my car, it would have cost north of $80,000. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, but I'm doing it myself. <laughs> so, so you did it yourself. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about the Aventador. Uh, it's I guess one of your earlier projects, right? You you wanted an Aventador, and mm-hmm. so you ended up buying. I don't know the this one of the stunt cars, one of the one of the I don't know if it's a hero car, or a stunt car, but certainly a ratty one used in one of the Fast and Furious movies. Yeah, actually, it's a it's a Murcielago. So, um, oh, okay. but it has yeah. but it has the uh, it has the Aventador. Um, uh, paint. So it has Arancio Argos. That was an Aventador paint. But I got uh, it's a Fast and Furious uh, hero car. Uh, but the hero car and stunt cars, they don't. It doesn't really mean anything at this point because they they're all stunt cars. They're all super used and abused. And I think when I first got it, I went by you and uh, like I just showed you the car, and you were like, "Oh my god, this thing is such a pile of crap." Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you dragged it over. We saw it when you bought it, and then uh, I don't know. Sometime later, I saw it on display at SEMA, done. Yeah, it's, uh, it's at SEMA. Actually, right now, that car is uh, closer to you. It's at the Peterson Museum in L.A., so you can, uh, it's on exhibit, uh, so you guys can go see it you know, whenever you want. And it's totally redone. Everything was done from the ground up. I mean, we got all the, it had 11 layers of paint on the front fenders um, <laughs> because they painted it in a parking lot multiple times because when they were filming in Iceland, it ju- the car just got messed up. I redid the entire interior. Um, everything's custom. The engine, the wheels. I mean, it's a, it's a full restoration. So now that's a museum quality example. And fun fact, I just bought the stunt car, which is a sister car to that, which is in way worse shape. And that's coming over from the UK uh, right now. So I should have that in a week or so. Yeah. Uh, Bill had to jump off. He's got he had an appointment, but uh, I wanted to be able to to get in this a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, tell us about the the new show. Tell us about uh, well, it's not the new show. It's season two. Uh, no, it's, uh, it's we're actually in uh, five. Um, but uh, we just finished filming uh, our fifth series. Uh, I call it a series because it's five episodes, so it's more like a mini series than a, than a full season of a show. Um, but we just premiered our fourth season on my YouTube channel, um, and then we just finished filming the fifth. Uh, about two weeks ago, and I, I don't even know what year it is, so you know, don't don't quote me on that. But yeah, but you've been, only been doing been it for a fun. couple of years, right? Car- We've only been doing it for one year, only one for year. one year. That's what I was. I thought we were on like year two. That's why I was thinking season two. I'm going by year two starting, but this is a uh, this is Car Trek, right? That's yes. the name of the series. Explain yeah, so, how that's mm-hmm. different than than your own YouTube channel. So it's a little bit different in that um, it's. It's like a show that uh, me and my uh, two partners, Ed Bolian from VinWiki and Tyler Hoover of Hoovy's Garage, we wanted to make something that was special, kind of like a spiritual successor to like old Top Gear, you know, like season five, six, when they were just, they didn't have a ton of budget, even though I know they had a ton of budget, but it, it just felt a little bit more organic and not like super, super produced, um, w- which is what people think of when they think of Top Gear now, which is like this crazy over the top show where you know you have million dollar budgets and they they can do anything they want they can take a a car to space if they wanted to um we wanted to do something like that that just uh worked on our chemistry because we're all friends and we wanted to also have a chance to um do things with our own cars because that's one of our differentiating factors that 
we own the cars. We're not just like renting them or, you know, we don't have press cars. Like these are our, our actual personal cars. We have to buy them every season. And then, you know, we have to sell them off if we lose. It's kind of like a competition thing. So it's, uh, that's a little bit of differentiation, but, uh, you know, we, we try to have fun with it. Okay, so where do we find that show for people that want to watch that? So you just go on my uh, YouTube channel. It's uh, youtube.com slash Tavares, T-A-V-A-R-I-S-H. Or you just look up Car Trek. It's like Star Trek, but with the car instead of Star. Now, what's coming up for you? What are, what's, what are some of the projects that you're working on now? So I have to finish my McLaren 675. So uh, all the body panels are coming back from paint. Uh, I also just got a 430 Scuderia Ferrari. Uh, so that should be fun. Uh, I'm going to be redoing some stuff on my Lamborghini here. Uh, I got a Corvette Z06, like my first Corvette ever. Actually, one of my first real American sports performance cars. Uh, and I'm super excited about that. What year, uh, what year is that? It's an 06. So okay. it's an early Z06. And, uh, I mean, I have a lot. So the Mercedes is done. Oh yeah. 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 So So, the big um, Mercedes S class is done. Yeah. So that's, that's my daily driver. I have a 2015 S 65 AMG. And, uh, that was, I mean, I just pulled off the wrap and I did some maintenance and stuff and now it's, now it's great. Uh, but it's, What's really done? Like, no, no cars ever really done. <laughs> of course, really, yeah. So I'm, I'll probably do some stuff, maybe an exhaust or like new bumpers or something. But uh, for now, it's my daily driver. Did you have another Ferrari? Did you have a three fifty five? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's off screen right now. So that three fifty five, I am making into a. Uh, it's going to have a three rotor Mazda rotary, a twenty B, uh, <laughs> and it's going to have a sequential five speed out of uh, out of a trophy truck, essentially. And it's going to be wide body uh, and it's a speedster. So it's going to have no, uh, no front windshield because um, what, you know, why else would you have a Ferrari if not to completely tick off every single Ferrari owner on the planet? That one was a fire damage car, right? Very fire damage. Yeah. So I bought that from Tyler Hoover and um, he had, when Ferrari tells you to do a recall, just do it. Like you should definitely do it because if you don't, the car burns down and the that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, what else you've got back there? I see. Now you got some funky cars. You've got this. Um, I, do you still have the fake Bugatti thing? So, yeah. So I had a <laughs> fake Bugatti that was uh, a, a Honda Civic in disguise. And uh, I actually gave that to uh, Cletus McFarland, uh, Garrett over there that uh, has this, you know, he has a personal racetrack called the Freedom Factory. And I just left it over there. We put it on Hummer H2 wheels and tires with like two or three feet of spacers. And this thing was like, it it was the sketchiest thing ever. Um, But I I just bought that because I thought it was, it was really funny. Uh, No, I don't have that. It's not in my shop anymore. (laughs) I have this uh, this Fast and Furious Eclipse replica that, uh, you know, it's, from this angle, maybe it looks okay, but like all the everything is is just wrong on it. All the parts are wrong. I have a Lexus SE three hundred that I'm putting a Lexus ISF engine in it, uh, so that is going to be like the first Lexus SCF. Uh, I have Matt Ferris million mile Lexus back there, so it's a Lexus LS four hundred with a million miles on it. Everything works. Um, An SL fifty five Mercedes. I have. I mean, I I, I forget. I have a. Uh, Porsche 911 uh, Turbo with a 4.2 liter stroker should make a thousand wheel horsepower or something like that. Uh, Aston Martin V12 Vanquish, uh, Aston Martin DBS, uh, another Mercedes, and uh, a Lotus Esprit that I got for ten grand, and then probably some other stuff that I'm, I can't remember. <laughs> what, what year is the Lotus? Uh, it's a 1990, so it's essentially like the Pretty Woman car, yeah. uh, and it ca- it actually came with uh, a VHS of Pretty Woman because the guy just loved the car so much. Okay, so other than probably the two Aston Martins and the S Class Mercedes, does anything else run? <laughs> oh, so most every most everything runs, um, other than the stuff that's been like really on fire. Yeah, uh, but. <laughs> But, you know, my uh, the Astons run, the Mercedes runs, uh, the Lambos all run. Um, let's see. I mean, I have a 3000 GT VR4 uh, 99. That was my dream car. And uh, that runs. I mean, every, everything on the lift over there runs with the exception of the Lotus Esprit, which had a uh, which had all the bent valves, just all of them, just at once. Um, and then, yeah, that's that's it. Now, Toyota Super as well. Do you have one or two? 
Oh, <laughs> I forgot about those. <laughs> See, yeah. Uh, so I have two. I have two. That's what Supras. I thought. You have you have a non turbo and a yeah. turbo. Yeah. So uh, they both started out as non turbo hard top five speeds. Okay. Um, uh, one is a left hand drive, so it's USDM, and another one is JDM. Uh, so I. I built up the the left hand drive, the USDM one, so it has a new paint job. It makes now six eighty two to the wheels to the tire, uh, which is which is nice for a two hundred thousand mile block. Um, and I, I love driving it. And I have another one that I just got, which is the worst one on the planet. It is like completely like JDM'd out. Like it's gauges upon gauges. There's like a turbo boost gauge. It's a non turbo. Like there's it, it's it's really really bad. So this was um, a JDM uh, Japanese import. And uh, that I'm going to do essentially another restoration on, and then I'm going to give it to a friend of mine. Okay. What's on your list now? <laughs> do you have a wish list of of maybe one or two cars that, I mean, you want to finish some projects and, and yeah. you've got a lot going on, uh, mm-hmm. but uh, maybe, I don't know, is there... Is there a project that you want to do, wacky or otherwise? And then is there just a car you want to have? Yeah, so uh, there's one that I think about every single day. And you've probably seen this video, and it's the one where a Bugatti Veyron goes into the Galveston Bay. And it's the one where, uh, you know, it's it's a total, it's a crazy story. So a guy bought a Bugatti Veyron uh, back in 2009, 2010, and he drives it into the bay for insurance fraud reasons and he said that like a seagull got in his way or something like that but he didn't know that he was actually on camera and that made it like that was like one of the early viral videos so um i really want that car uh so that like flood veyron and i found that car and i was negotiating with the guy who had that car and i thought everything was going to go well for me i mean it was more money than i spent on anything ever including my house um but like uh, we we reached an agreement and then he was like no i want you know 100 grand over that price and i'm like oh okay that that doesn't make any sense you know i'd be I, i'd have to pay this off for the next 15 years like it, it doesn't make any sense so that's kind of the one that got away if it comes back up at some point that's fine. But right now I'm trying to find some like maybe like a Miley Veyron, not like Miley Cyrus, but just like one with Miley's miles on them. Yeah. So like a, a Veyron that just needs work, uh, maybe like even an early Chiron because they just released the Super Sport. So, yeah. you know, maybe the early ones are just taking a dive in values. Uh, Jaguar XJ220, that sort of thing. But I, I really want like a like a hypercar. But not at these prices, not not in this market because everything's going crazy. Right, but staying on theme, you wouldn't mind something. You wouldn't want you want the highest highest mileage Bugatti yeah. out there, or maybe yeah. something a little bit damaged, or you know, yeah. and then you'll just do what you do onto it to try to bring it back. And yeah, it's it's easier for me to do that because. Uh, honestly, I love the story because there's no story with a Veyron that's like, well, it has five miles on it and it's been, you know, uh, cleaned with a diaper every night. Like, I don't, I don't care about that. Like, if you're telling me that like a rapper bought this and then he gave it to one of his entourage and then they used it as an Uber for three years, you know, like that's really interesting to me because it's so far out of the realm of like uh, normal that I I'm just so drawn to it. Like any car that has like a weird history or just something sketchy, like I love being a part of that story. Who's who's on your team? Who helps you figure out some of this stuff? You know, when you're you know, when you get a car and it's caught on fire and you know, it's kind of limited. On, let's just say, hey, you're not a trained Ferrari tech. You haven't been under the hood of a 3, you know, of of 300 355s, right? It's just mm-hmm. not you know, just with experience, you know, sure. uh, you you learn more with just experience, but you have a handful of different cars. You've done some pretty wacky things with it, and there's mm-hmm. not a lot of you know, uh, uh, you know, books on the shelf going, "Hey, this is how you this is how you pull the engine on your on your Lamborghini right. and rewire it." And mm-hmm. you know, how are you, who's on your team or who's helping you to figure some of this stuff out, or how are you figuring it out, like? So, so I'm using uh, what most of us use, and it's Google. <laughs> so. I, I try to do um, everything myself. Now, I do have a friend that helps me out, but he's, you know, he's also 
Uh, he's been working in the field for a while. He he did modifications in a, a company called Speed for Sale. Uh, his name is Jared. I mean, he's been on the channel a bunch, and we actually have a channel um, for like with both of us doing some budget builds, and it's called Wrench Every Day. Um, and he helps me out in a lot of the uh, the more technical stuff. But it's you know we're all just flying by the seat of our pants. Like there's no you know, manual for McLaren 675 LT. Like I do have the factory service manual, so I can follow some of the factory approved methods, but you know, we're just doing the same thing on every car. We're just making sure that the bolts are correct. And if it needs, uh, you know, Loctite and we're making sure that all the torque specs are correct. We're measuring three times, you know, just stuff that you should do on every car because every car is basically just nuts and bolts. Uh, some of them are a little bit more expensive, but you know, if we need like computer stuff that to to uh, recalibrate things, then I'll usually just buy that. You know, there's a lot of times there's like Chinese clone software that works just as well. I have that for the Mercedes and the McLaren. So like realistically, I'm never going to have to go to the dealer for anything. I mean, I've taken off like the McLaren was down to the carbon tub. There's nothing that McLaren, the dealership could ever do for me. Like I don't, I don't need them for anything. Right. If I can rebuild this car by myself, like listen, they're they're not they're not going to be in my uh, my phone book. Yeah, well, it sounds it sounds fun, but it sounds like you've also got a bunch of projects going on at the same time. Is that? Yeah. Is it because I mean, look, I've got a a couple projects just on my own, and uh, I'll post something and be like, Hey, I'm doing this on the truck. And then I'll post something and go, I'm doing this on the, on the Mustang. And somebody will say, why don't you finish the truck? And I say, I'm working on the Mustang cause I'm waiting for parts for the truck. Oh yeah. You know? Oh yeah. There's a lot of like waiting for parts or figuring something out or, or mm -hmm. even if you do outsource to a particular vendor, usually you're kind of on a list to get on their schedule as well. And then when, it, how yeah. long is it before it comes back? So, mm -hmm. uh, I get the, you know, having maybe two projects at a time and especially if you have the, the space to do it but you have, far, you have far more than two <laughs> going yeah. on at, at the same well time. i mean to, to maintain a youtube channel you need to have variety and i've realized that you can do um you know one car at a time but then you have those parts issues and then you reach a point of burnout you know like if you're like on a car every single day for six months you're not going to want to deal with it anymore like you, you're gonna there's gonna be a point where you go if I go into my garage and I see that Lamborghini, I'm going to light it on fire again. You know, it, it's just, it, yeah. it gets to you. So you need to kind of reset your, um, your, your, your kind of mental state by working on something else or just walking away from it for a little while. But that's why I have a lot of other cars because people tend to like other makes and models. Um, you know, the people that like the exotic stuff might not like the the cheaper stuff, but people that like the cheaper stuff don't don't care about the exotic stuff because it's not as attainable. So um, the parts thing is a definite concern, especially now because everything's on back order. So yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know how it is. Uh, okay, well, we're running out of time, but just uh, one last thought: is what projects, or is there one or multiple? where you dug into it and then you just had to throw in the towel. You're like, there's... Well, th there's one project that I wanted to do. It's a, it's a custom supercar. So I uh, I bought a, it's called a Superlight SLC. And it's essentially a kit car, but they call it a component car. It's a kit car that is a, it's, it's a mid-engine rear-wheel drive, um, supposed to be like a race car, uh, track day car. And I bought one that had that, uh, that Mazda rotary in it. And the, the frame was just so, so damaged. And, you know, it, all the welds were broken and it was bent. It looked like a pretzel. But, you know, I, I looked at it and I was like, I, I can't do anything with this because even if I straightened out every panel, it's still going to be, you know, like the structure is not going to be sound. It's going to have micro cracks and stuff like that. So I just threw in the towel there. But I think I'm going to go back to that project probably next year for SEMA because I actually bought another one that is not in the garage yet. But... I actually bought one of the uh, one of the stunt cars from uh, the movie Need for Speed with uh, what's it called? Um, like Jesse Pinkman, who was the Aaron Paul. Aaron there Paul. we go. Yeah. So uh, I bought one of the stunt cars from that movie. So I'm going to be working on that and then making my own essentially supercar shell on top of that, which is I don't know how how it's going to turn out. But, you know, if you're not ambitious, then why are you even doing this? Yeah. OK, well, it sounds good. Are you going to be at SEMA this year? Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. are you so gonna have doing... anything on display there? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I'm probably going to have maybe two cars. So McLaren is definitely coming. Uh, I'm going to try to maybe get the 430 Scuderia and maybe some other cars if uh, if anybody wants me. But uh, yeah, well, I'll see you there. Awesome, man. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we'll miss you at Barrett Jackson. Uh, uh, but there's another one coming up in September in Houston. So that's a little bit closer. Maybe you want to do that. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. Send me pictures. <laughs> so follow me. He's the real Tavarish on Instagram and mm-hmm. Twitter, and yeah. he's Ask Tavarish on Facebook. But really, you want to uh, you want to go to his YouTube channel. Go to his YouTube channel. Search for Tavarish. You'll see his uh, his wacky little icon with his. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like almost like a Simpsons character. And, yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, it's great. The videos are fun. Uh, they're energetic. They're 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 definitely. Uh, uh, you're, you're taking on these. W- ridiculous projects but they're fun to see and how they evolve over time so uh congratulations with the youtube channel and all the success that you're having there um the you know the warehouse looks great the projects look great i uh, can't wait to get out there i don't really like florida so i don't know if i'm gonna get out to florida <laughs> but uh, oh it's, listen i got ac in here it's very nice uh, yeah. just don't go outside but uh i'd love to, to stop by and check out what you have at some point but absolutely um, open invite yeah awesome man well don't be a stranger it's good to have you on the show and uh good to connect with you again it's been a minute since yeah once we lost events for a year or so we we realized we don't get to see uh, our friends in the space absolutely uh, and uh and we missed that for sure but all right. Thank, thank you. you so much, Freddie. Uh, take care. We're going to wrap things up here. Um, thank you. I'm going to tell you guys about uh, Geico. You guys own your home or you rent your home. Either way, it can be a lot of hard work. But you know what's easy? It's bundling your policies with Geico. Geico makes it easy to bundle your homeowners or renters insurance along with your auto policy. And we know that's a good thing because you already have so much to do around your home already. Just visit Geico.com and get a quote and see how much you could save. It's Geico easy. Visit Geico.com today. Uh, all right, guys. Thanks so much for uh, for tuning in. Of course, you can check us out at Car Cash Show. Uh, you can follow me at Motorator, and uh, you know, be posting some uh, uh, some of the cool rides in uh, the TRX. And hopefully, we'll see you guys at uh, Barrett Jackson Las Vegas. I hear it's going to be open. It's going to be a good event. So, until next time, keep the air and the spare and the bag and the wheel. For the latest updates and call-in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CarCast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarCastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit CarCastShow.com. CarCast Show.